Week 14, 10 under 10, brought to you by the boys at DFS Army. Let's go, let's win a milli. What up, what up, what up, everybody? It's your boy DFS up north back here. Let me fix my camera. My goodness, what's going on here? Back with another 10 under 10 GPP podcast brought to you by the fine folks over at DFS Army, where we talk about my 10 favorite plays, all under 10% owned on DraftKings and FanDuel. And let me tell you, we have been smashing lately. Just a huge week last week with Debo uh, just going off in the slate. So we'll get to that in a minute. But before we get there, if you want more free content like this um, and the article which you can find the link in the bio here on youtube uh please like subscribe comment do all that jazz that keeps us coming to you guys for free if you want in-depth access to some of the tools that i show things like that uh, and to me and all the other pros here in the dfs army discord you got to use that code up north that gets you 10 percent off vip for light so ladies and gentlemen 10 under 10 Let's get to it. Um, let me bring this up here. There's the chalkboard. We're going to look at that in a minute. But first, let's talk about last week because you know your boy was smashing last week, all right? Um, look at this just DraftKings unreal slate for us on DraftKings last week. What I end up here? 3.84x value, which is just an insane number. You got the QB2 and Jalen Hurts, a 2.9x. You got Sam Howell, QB5, 3.25. Kyron Williams, thank you, Sean McVay, for giving us a touchdown late in the game when it didn't matter. Said he's got Kyron on his fantasy team. He needs to get him some tutties, uh, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, but that got us into the RB7 range. And then we said, you know, we like both wide receivers uh, for the uh, 49ers. Ayuk was fine. 14 wide receiver on the slate, 2.16 value. We will take that every day of the week. But my goodness, Debo Samuel, I said in our write-up last week that I think that they are cooking up something for Debo in this game. They are going to use him in a bunch of different ways against this Eagles defense. And boy, did they ever 38.8 DraftKings points, 6.25x value. Um, and then we just, I said, hey, I don't love paying up for tight end. But if you're gonna pay up for tight end, I love the I love Sam Laporta here, and Sam Laporta just went ballistic. 5.71x value. FanDuel, eh? Okay, I'm I'm you know I'm looking at you know sort of the the history here of of this uh we're week 14 of the 10 under 10 uh and this pod, and I am uh, I'm almost ready to call it the QB value pod because we've just been smashing QB value all year again last week. Joe Flacco, Gardner Minshew, both QB7, QB8, smashing value. I think they were in the top four in value last week. The rest of FanDuel, very meh, which is weird because FanDuel's sort of been my jam lately. Uh, but uh, when you smash like this on DraftKings, like who freaking cares? Uh, love to see it. Like I said, uh, I think we've got a very interesting slate of games. And oh, you can see my first guide there. But let's first look at the DFS Army chalkboard. Uh, this is updated uh, live every single, uh, you know, I think it kicks every hour, every couple hours when we get new projections in. Um, but the chalkboard is going to tell you where the ownership is coming in. Uh, we got, you know, you're kind of a, you know, it's, it's interesting to me that we look at this and we go dud, 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 dud. I mean, essentially dud, 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 uh, with the top four QB ownerships. Right. And then, I mean, you got my homes, but then kind of, Dot 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 again. So uh, we got the, the the game of the week here is is Casey and the Buffalo Bills. But where is Josh Allen? Maybe in my article. Um, we look over at the running back Zach Moss. Chalk again. He ended up in the nuts last week despite not really doing anything. Um, just because of the salary savings. Which so I'm a little surprised that we're seeing with the increased salary of fifty nine hundred. We're still seeing him as like a ridiculous chalk ownership uh, over on the wide receiver. Brandon Ayuk somehow is is the is the chalk here, followed by Keenan Allen, Rashi Rice. I think there's leverage to be had on almost all of these guys at the top, besides maybe Garrett Wilson. Um, 
I think Mike Pittman's intriguing, but again, 15.7% is a little outrageous. Tight end and Joku is the chalk, but there's a guy in this top 10 list. He's under 10% owned, obviously, that I really like, and we're going to talk about him right now. But first, let's get the QBs, right? Joey Flacco. Uh, love Flacco this week. I'm going right back to the well with my boy. We were on him last week on FanDuel. I'm switching over to DraftKings just because the pricing, the like, are we kidding? Are you kidding me with this 4700 for a QB in a smash spot all right uh jaguars give up a ton of points to the opposing wide receivers the browns are at home love joe flacco this week i have no idea why he is so low uh low owned one thing that i really like to do you guys is look at okay is there anybody showing up on on this area of uh, the chalk that is you know for him to get there right like a wide receiver that's chalk for him to get there what happens to happen to his quarterback his quarterback's got a smash too right so Elijah Moore showing up here, 4,500. I mean, price has something to do with it, but 14% owned. And we look at Joe Flacco, 1.96. There's a there's a disconnect there for me. Um, so I am I I really do like uh Joe Flacco. And maybe what I like most about like a Flacco Moore stack is just the price tag, what it lets you do with the rest of your lineup. You can play a bunch of studs. Speaking of studs, if I'm paying up for a QB this week, it's going to be Josh Allen. Like, I don't get it. I get that he's 8,300 and the highest price player on the slate, but 4.83% in the game of the week. The guy is a fantasy monster. Like, don't overthink it. Same as Jalen Hurts last week. Do not overthink it. Play Josh Allen. Get him in your lineup. Like, if I'm building three lineups, it's one Joe, Joe Flacco, two Josh Allen, essentially, um, is, is what I'm doing. So, love Josh Allen this week. I just don't know how you can go anywhere else. Like, the, the ownership is insane to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I I, I got to be on uh, Allen here. Pair him up with Diggs. Uh, Kincaid, if you're if you're if you can't afford Diggs, I think is a is a great option, or even a Gabe Davis. Uh, all in on Josh Allen this week, and I can't quit Kyron Williams. I, this is maybe like the third week in a row, but he's continually under owned based on the role in his offense, right? And now, like I get that the matchup against the Ravens isn't great, but it's not bad. Um, and I think that he might even get more than the 20 touches that he normally does just because they're trying to keep Lamar off the field. They don't want this offense to get rolling. Um, 20 carries, six targets. Like that's really kind of the floor here with Kyron Williams. So at 7,300 under 10% on love that play. All right. We're looking for cheap receivers on the slate. Again, a receiver that is super cheap in comparison. Uh, Wilson's, I guess, not super chalk. But uh, comparatively is Jerry Judy. Uh, basically, like he's due some serious positive TE regression. Uh, I think Wilson's going to have to throw it a ton here to keep up. Uh, and if he, the thing with Judy is, is that he's not necessarily a red zone threat. All right. Because of that, right, he ends up, um, like if he's going to score here, he's likely got to take it from 20 plus yards out of out. Right. Um, which I think gives him a, a much higher ceiling, the floor, not great, but the ceiling is, is what we're looking for here. I think he's got three X value written all over him. Uh, love that. And then I said it last week, right? Like I don't, I, I'm, I'm super confused by everybody going to Ayuk. Is it just that Debo smash last week and now it's Ayuk's turn, right? Like against the Seahawks, it's a great option. Um, uh, like he just scored 22 on them two weeks ago. Now he gets them at home. Like Debo Samuel at 6.5% is just an outrageous, outrageous value. All right. I am all in on my boy Debo Samuel. Okay. Um, love, 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 love the price here. Uh, again, if you are a DFS Army VIP and you want to, or not a DFS Army VIP, and you want to be a Millie, a Millie winner. Like my boy, Bobby Wow, right? Like my boy, Bobby Wow, if you want to do it, you got to become a DFS Army VIP. Um, that's really, it, it's just the value of, of being a DFS Army VIP is just so insane. Right, what you get, the tools, all the all the information, the Discord, the access to the VIP pods, because we've got you know podcasts that I'm doing here that this is free, but becoming a DFS Army VIP, you get links to the ones that are are 
just for those guys, right? Like Geek is doing his one right now, I believe, while I'm recording this. Uh, that has tons of good info. You got the DS set up, all these things. So um, we were just talking about DraftKings. Let's build a DraftKings lineup real quick. We'll look at what it looks like with Josh Allen and Joe Flacco. So if we're building the Josh Allen stack right away, right, it's, it's a little tricky, right? It's a little tricky based on the salaries. Okay, especially when we go to wide receiver and we're trying to plug in Steffi Diggs. Okay, now my I, I got some work to do. I got some work to do here. Okay, um, ways that we can get involved and with some cheap guys. We'll hear about him on the FanDuel side, but I really like Justin Watson while everybody's chasing Rashi Rice. Um, and then let's go to running back. Okay, I don't love it but you could go like full game stack here with somebody like uh, McKinnon or Clyde Edwards Hilaire, right? It's gross. He's going to be the starter. Um, now we're feeling a little bit better. We throw in a, a DST, a, a cheap DST and a, uh, a, a cheap running back or cheap wide receiver or cheap tight end. Uh, we can really get back after here. I always like to go to the bottom for my defense. And let's go Bears here. Bears at home against Detroit. I do like Jared Goff quite a bit, but I don't mind getting some, you know, Bears here. And I, you know what? I don't really hate either is this Cole Komet uh, Bears stack. Okay, Bobby Wow, if he's watching this, he is going to love me right now. All right. I love Alvin Kamara, you guys. I am going to put him in the running back spot, though. I really like Alvin Kamara this week. Like, just a smash spot against New Orleans. Jameis Winston, I think, is, is an improvement for him at quarterback. And we can plug him in and still have 5,100 left for the last two spots. We go down here and we, we try to find maybe another cheap receiver. Actually, here's what. Uh, I don't want to go. We'll do this on the net. We'll do him on the next one. Um, uh, I'll tell you who I'm thinking of here in a second. But if we go Elijah Moore right? Who we think is a really good value. Now in the flex, we've got some options. Okay. Uh, 5,700. We can go Zay Flowers, uh, Jacoby Myers against the Vikes. Ooh, baby. Actually, let's see this. Can I get to the Vikes D? Can I get to the bike? All right. What does it look like if I do this? I, the guy I was talking about was TJ Hawkinson. I love TJ Hawkinson this week. Is there a cheap flexi? Is there a cheap receiver in the flex that we can get in board with? This is a a tough lineup to build. I really love the Vikings defense though against uh against Aiden O'Connell. Like Flo is going to really disguise some things here. Uh and I am I'm pretty high. Okay, so we could go Rashad Bateman. Don't don't hate this. Okay. I don't have Kyron Williams in my lineup. So let's say we go instead of Kamara, we go back to Kyron. Okay. And now I've got 42 is it worth it to get to 4,200? Let's see. I don't know that it is, but we'll find out. No, I think Kamara is just such a good play. All right. I think I can go cheapy here in the flex. All right. Obviously, we're taking some chances on guys like Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, things like that. But let's see flex. Oh, I was trying to get Kamara in there and I clicked Kyron Williams again. Um, I was like, why do I have so much salary left? So maybe you go like a guy that's coming back into the lineup this week, like a Marvin Mims Jr. What do we got to say about Mims? Full participant. Uh, his game log obviously isn't great. Um, he's got to take the top off the defense upside. Bateman practice fully. I really do. I think he's it's it's a bit touchdown dependent for Rashad Bateman, um, so it's obviously not ideal. Uh, you could go a guy like Jalen Guyton here. Uh, played a ton. He hasn't done anything, but I don't mind the upside of a guy like a Jalen Guyton um, against Denver, uh, though their defense has been much improved. So if we were going to build this with our boy Joey Flax, right, now that lineup looks a lot different, okay? You can still do like a Minnesota Vikings, which I love, um, against the Raiders, but just you can like stack up some absolute studs in this lineup, okay? Eli Moore. Let's go Vikings and Hawkinson again. I love Hawkinson. We'll talk about him here in a minute on the FanDuel side. Um, I love Hawkinson at tight end, though. 
Uh, and then DST, I love the Vikings, even though we are on the road in Vegas. And I say we because that is my team. Uh, we go to running back. Like, you can go Kamara. You can come down here and play a Jamar Gibbs, a David Montgomery, guys who have been smashing. You can even eat the, I don't mind eating the Zach Moss chalk, right? Um, wide receiver. Okay. Um, I don't really want anybody from, uh, you know, any of these guys. I don't mind going like to a Kelvin Ridley here. I get that the matchup's tough, but he's just a smash play. Um, hold on. Oh, never mind. Uh, we got 5,600 left. Where can we go? Let's see. Let's go running back for the flex and see if we can get anybody in here. That's interesting. Go. Maybe we say, okay, we're going to go jet McKinnon instead of Clyde Edwards Hilaire. In that game, now I got 6,400 at the wide receiver spot. I can go Thielen, Sutton, Godwin, Chris Kirk's on the IR. Somehow died last week. Or we can just go Gabe Davis, right? Now we got that little mini stack there. And at the bottom, I think that's a lot better lineup, right? Uh, even though I love Josh Allen and the upside that he brings, this is more of a... I think the Josh Allen lineup that we just built is more of a GPP-based. And this lineup is more of a cash we're just getting across the line value i don't know that this lineup has the upside to really take it down right uh whereas i think that josh allen does one does with a guy like jalen guyton okay fan duel all right let's talk a little bit about fan duel the duel all right uh jake browning who baby looked great last week i was um a little not disappointed, but like it took him a little bit, right? We saw it. We we uh, we had an idea of what was going to happen. I put him in this article, I think, two weeks ago when he debuted, uh, and I was excited because I thought like that performance that we saw last week uh, could definitely happen, right? Um, so he was able to get it done last week. Uh, really big smash. Uh, he is going to be the chalk on DraftKings, but if we look over here at the chalkboard on FanDuel. It's a little bit different, right? Um, he's still now with those top threes. He's bumped up to all the way up to 9.26% now, but um, a good spot regardless, okay? Uh, I just, the price tag just makes probably way too much sense for me here. So I think you pair him with Chase and then just move on. Like the tight end situation's a mess. Boyd is maybe back uh, or is dealing with, is questionable. He should play. Um, but I'm just going to pair Jake Browning with Chase and move on. The other QB that I like is way under owned, and I get it. Goff on the road typically sucks, um, but he's just been super consistent all year. It's uh, and uh, you know if Chicago sells out to stop the run game, we're going to see Goff go to the air, go to Amon Ra, uh, and I think that this could be a an intriguing spot, right? And the price tag isn't that high for how high powered this offense has been. We talked about Kamara. I didn't even write anything. Like, this is the best spot on the slate. He's got the best matchup, the highest upside. I think he's a better DraftKings play, but over there, the ownership's going to be higher, right? So I'm playing him on, on FanDuel. The 9,000 is expensive. I get it. Find a way to get him in your lineup. You will be rewarded with Elvin Kamara this week. Justin Watson, I think this game's going to be a shootout. And with Pacheco out, like, McCombs is going to have to throw the ball 40 times. Like, he got zero targets, but I just have this feeling that we're going to get the Watson game here, that he is going to catch a long one. He's going to get an end zone touch, right? Like he is going to put up 15, 16, 17 points, which is an easy 3x value on FanDuel and a great, like we just saw, the value on DraftKings, I think, is there too. Now, TJ Hawkinson. Here is my opinion on Hawkinson this week. I think that Justin Jefferson being back benefits him more than when he's out. I get that Hawkinson has ran some of those routes, right? That Jay Jettis has. But with Dobbs under, stand, under center instead of Kirk Cousins, Hawkinson is going to continue to be the guy, all right? I expect they force the ball to Jettis first couple of series, right? They are going to try to get him involved right away. As soon as they do that, what's or what's El Las Vegas going to do, all right? Vegas is going to now start to key on Jefferson. They're going to try to box him in, get two guys on him. Um, and what is that going to open up? 
It's going to open up TJ Hawkinson in the middle of the field. A, a, a quarterback like Dobbs is always looking in before he looks out regardless. Um, so I think that this jet is coming back is a boon for someone like Hawkinson. I think it hurts someone like Jordan Addison, but this really helps Hawkinson. I wrote in here that at the end of the day, I think Hawkinson will continue to lead the Vikings in receiving yards and receptions, even with Jefferson back. I really do think that happens at the very least for this week. Now, I also put in here, if Max Crosby is out, I don't think he's going to be. It looks like he's going to play. But if he is out at all, like Justin Jefferson is going to, or I mean, the Vikings are going to just absolutely torch the Raiders. Like he is that offense. If he's limited, he, they're going to be in trouble, right? Um, so uh, my preferred play this week is that Vikings defense against Aiden O'Connell and Hawkinson together in the same lineup, um, but obviously on their own, fine as well. So let's, let me get this up here. Let's build a lineup uh, for FanDuel, right? Um, let me see here. So let's build it with, let's start with Jake Browning. Okay. The salary difference is not that crazy. Josh Allen is going to be under owned here as well, right? Let me see the chalkboard. Ah, he's getting a little bit of he's getting a little bit more love on FanDuel. I think it's easier sometimes to, to build on FanDuel. Um, but if we go all the way down here, we got Jared Goff at 7,500, Jake Browning 65. So a thousand dollars makes a really big difference. Um, let me go to running back. Let's see, just, let's just see what happens here if we try to get in all the studs. Okay. Chase. That's Hawkinson, tight end, let's go Vikings, oh, way too cheap, way too cheap over here, okay, running back, where's our value, okay, um, Zach Moss, priced up a little here, uh, so I don't mind going to like a Damian Pierce. All right. Scored last week. It is still a bit of a timeshare with your boy, Devin Singletary, but I kind of am intrigued by that play. I think you could even go like a Keaton Mitchell here as a cheap running back. Uh, like he has been pretty good per game right now. You know, like the last couple of game logs. Uh, let's see, not getting a ton of attempts, right? But he's getting involved. Like he's almost, he's touched on dependent, right? Uh, but I think that that, like that three cheap running back really opens us up to some decent, decenter, is that a word? Decenter wide receivers here. Uh, so we go, we can get down here and play someone like Odell, not Josh Palmer. We can get access to the bills with Khalil Shakir, we can play Cedric Tillman, who's been D, who has some upside. I kind of like Jamison Williams. Uh, oh, we talked about Justin Watson. Let's put Justin Watson in there, right? Let me search him. And that opens us up to a $78,000 wide receiver, which is Michael Pittman. Boom, done, 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 you guys. Like, that is perfect. I love that lineup. Love that lineup. Okay, we're building something with uh, Jared Goff, obviously going to look slightly different but we'll go golf we'll go sun god right uh i'm on raw okay um my run it back for chicago dj moore good matchup not gonna go any like I'm kind of hamstringing myself by by forcing TJ Hawkinson to do all these lineups. So let's just see what we can get for cheaper here. And Joku is going to be kind of chalky. Should be a good play. Harrison Bryant was involved. Let's go likely though. Let's go likely. I I like I likely like that price. Um, running back. I said you just got to find ways to get Kamara in. Can we go Kamara and Kyren without killing ourselves? I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't think I can fit all of them in without playing two absolute duds. We don't get very much lower than 4,800 here, but maybe, maybe Bryson Hopkins, Isaiah Hiller. Oh man, we are getting into some real tough looks down here. Randall Cobb, Jake Bobo, Richie James, Ronnie Bell. All right, here we go. What, 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 are we, what are we pricing this boy at? 
Yeah, there we go. There, now we can make it work. We get Washington, who smashed last week. I expect to continue to be involved. Let's see if they got anything to say. He got all six of his targets with Christian Kirk out. Like, I get that it's a tough matchup, but I don't hate it. Uh, and then I need a, a $5,600 wide receiver. Well, let's go. Let's do this, actually. Make sure we get our, our running back in the flex. All right. There we go. Now we got 5,600 in the flex, which actually probably ends up being a wide receiver, too. Um, unless we play like a Travion Williams, but uh, I don't think so. Actually, I don't. I don't, this is ballsy. It's really ballsy, but I, I kind of like this play, <laughs> Ty Chandler. Uh, I get it. It's not great. Like, it's sketchy. He could be a zero, but the guy's super explosive. He's super explosive, and the matchup is is pretty decent. Like, yeah, Alexander Madison's not good. You know, you, it's, I don't, I don't hate that. I will get some exposure to Ty Chandler this week. So again, that's a very Millie maker. I'm trying to, to win a million dollars here uh, and get it done. So uh, again, I hope that was helpful. If you are not a DFS army VIP, make sure that you become one. You can use that code D or sorry, up North uh, and you get access to all of this stuff. Maybe my favorite tool, the prop optimizer, right? Looking at, where there is value in the props market. And that's not just good for, you can bet, or if you're playing on prize picks, that's good just for trying to find DFS edges, right? Uh, so that is where I am at this week, fellas, ladies, gentlemen. Uh, I hope that you have a fantastic week 14. Good luck to all of you. And again, if you become a DFS Army VIP, hit me up in the Discord. Let me know you're there. All right. We can help you answer any questions you got. So, cheers.